time to celebrate come on -na 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 -na. it's time to celebrate guys fog entertainment is back with another from review welcome to the channel kenny had absolutely nothing to celebrate in this episode after finding out that his mother tang chen was dead that is him now parentless but the monsters didn't stop that from letting them provoke Mr. Kenny. Come on and celebrate and have a good time. Honestly, um... I thought it was one of the best scenes of the episode. Even though it's, like, sad that the guy's lost his mother. It's, you know, he, he needs space. He, he says to Christy, let me be... Let me be by myself. You know, I just need to sit here. I need to try and, you know, deal with this. And then the radio just comes on and it's telling him to celebrate even though the guy's got absolutely nothing to celebrate. His father has been killed. His mother's been killed. And the girl that he loves... Turns out it's a lesbian, so and she was stolen from him. So it's like, no, it's not a good time for Kenny. You can prank them in whatever order you want in terms of importance, but yeah, you're right, not good for him. I mean, this just proves that the monsters pretty much know everything. They, they knew, do. They knew to play that. It's not like it was a random guess, which means that they know their thoughts. That changes the ballpark for me. Yeah, well, how much do the monsters actually know? But we start the episode, it's called When We Go. We start the episode with Jade. He finds the mutilated corpse of Tang Chen. And he also finds Boyd mumbling hysterically while still being tied inside the barn. I didn't know what Boyd was mumbling. I thought Boyd was going crazy. Turns out he's mumbling the last words of Tae Cheng. And I, I guess he wanted to repeat them so that he would remember them. And that he could give them to Kenny. Because if he didn't repeat them, I'm pretty sure over the course of the night he'd have probably forgot. Because I, I doubt Boyd's fluent in Chinese. No, absolutely not. He had to do this. And you know what? It was a good message to return to Kenny. Boyd's a soldier. He's loyal to the end. Well, he literally was a soldier. He's seen he see yeah, the task yeah. through. Yeah, but Boyd, Boyd knows what it's all about. Uh, so Jade helps him. We then see Jade and Boyd, unfortunately, they're to give Tang Chen the wheelbarrow treatment and her body gets wheeled uh, you know, across the town, everybody looking on. Jim and Kenny find some fresh grown vegetables, so you know, this will help them in the location that they were at. They were going to head back to the village anyway because Jim thought that he couldn't possibly you know, die and, and leave his kids parentless, just like, just like Kenny is, so they were going to return, but they did find some fresh vegetables, which um, which helps. We see them bring the fresh vegetable uh, vegetables back into the village, but then Kenny, uh, food is the last thing on his mind because him and Jim, they, they do see Boyd come over. Boyd doesn't look too good. Uh, initially, Jim thinks maybe something happened to his kids, but Boyd gives them the all clear. Your kids are fine. But then <laughs> Kenny, then Kenny realizes, well, here. If the sad face isn't because of Jim's kids, where's my mom? And it turns out, yes, um, Tae Cheng is dead. Kenny doesn't take it well. I don't really expect him to take it well. Uh, I thought it was a pretty well... I, I thought this was where the episode peaked. Uh, pretty much everything up until he destroyed the jukebox. Um, I, him find, I thought it was some really good acting um, from everyone involved, really. I thought, I thought it was a touching episode, the fact that they kind of just dedicate it to Tia Chen. I like uh, Kenny. I, I think Kenny's one of the better characters. I think in season two he might have got a wee bit lost in the shuffle, but I think with this, he, he seems hell bent for vengeance. And you know what? That's what we need. It, it's we a need point. someone it's, to take the fight to these monsters. Aye. It's been Boyd on his own for too long. Yeah, that's exactly what we want to see. But saying. Kenny's been loyal to Boyd, but it's more like he's just kind of, you know, reluctant. But now it likes he wants to go on the attack instead of playing defense. No, absolutely. Yeah, and, and you know what? We're, we're, we're season three, man. I, I I think we do need to see. I'm not asking for like aliens level of like you know turning up to a hundred going in the colonies and wiping out Cenomorphs level of like you know violence, but I think we need something. Yeah, at the same time, like how much longer can they just plan? Especially with the food running out and stuff, how much longer can they plan just to survive? No, they, know, they need to start trying to find a way out. They've got so many red shirts. I I think you could have an episode where you know Boyd and Kenny like rally the troops. And I'm like, you know what? We're going to go into the tunnels during the day when the, when these bastards are sleeping. All right, we're going to rally every gun we've got and we're going to go in and we're going to try it. And well, you know, here, and, no, and you could kill off like 15 red here, shirts. The, the Walking Dead had a lot of red shirts during the episode No Way Out. And <laughs> how'd that work it? No way. Yeah, yeah but that's they, the Walking they, Dead. They, 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 turned in, they turned into monster slayers. So, yeah, um, Kenny's left alone by Christy 
in the diner then the jukebox starts playing and it's the old celebrate song and it's just i mean they're, they're mocking kenny here ripping the pish clean out of kenny Brilliant. and uh he just he goes he's furious and he destroys the jukebox and he is like fuck this um kenny had like one last request and that was to try and make his mother look like his mother which is going to be a little bit hard after you know the torture and everything she went through but christy does her best alongside jade sarah brings a piece of uh, tang chen's clothing at first christy's a little bit reluctant to let her in but in the end i think she just kind of lets it go and i mean should sarah be forgiven at this point or or do you think that people are right to still hold a a grudge against sarah or I mean, as you pointed out i think it was in episode one it's not just her brother that she killed i mean she's she's literally killed people here in cold blood she killed jade's friend right she got kenny's dad killed and the other person that worked in the yes like, the hospital she killed her own brother yo she's done a lot of good since then but it, 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 it's a weird one i think if you were going to kill her or deal with it it would have been last season it feels very delayed to do anything now. i think the character's just there to make a sacrifice at the end isn't it i mean surely yeah her her, yeah, redemp like her redemption is um you know sacrificing herself to save one someone i think that's what we're going to get yeah but is and that good enough is kenny going to be like ah well that was worth the death of my father jade's going oh that was worth the well, death of well, my friend well she saves kenny well maybe she'll need to save uh jade and kenny to make up for it or I something don't, i don't think she, does jade even remember the name of his friend because i certainly don't no i don't <laughs> well Edward? I don't think it was that. Uh, Fatima goes to visit Christy, but Christy's not there, so Marielle does the checks instead. Um, you had Boyd's son. What's Boyd's son called again? Boyd's son, Ellis. Ellis. E Ellis was like being a little bit of a, uh, a pussy here. He's like, oh, I think we'll just wait on Christy. It's like, hold on. You've not got a great selection of doctors and nurses to choose from here. You know what? I actually think this show would be better off with Fatima and Ellis. I think maybe what they're doing with Fatima seems a wee bit intriguing with the whole eating rotten vegetables and weird stuff like that. But I think Boyd cares enough about the town and its inhabitants for that to tug on his heartstrings without his job or son living at the halfway house. Yeah, I, I, I feel, feel like, I feel like a, a death to Kenny would fucking hurt Boyd just as much. <laughs> yeah, like they barely interact. Like, they, right, we will get to the funeral, but they interact after it, and it's kind of like, oh, how are you old not? Yeah, dad, and he's like, not good. I mean, not, not a lot. And that was it. Kind of speak like strangers. Mariel says, ah, uh, you know, due to the the pregnancy, you have got heavy malnourishment and all that, and basically says, like, you need to start and try eating. Fatima returns to the colony house, and there's like rotten vegetables that they're going to throw away because. The soil is contaminated. But she starts eating the rotten vegetables uh, that were being prepared for compost. And at this point, you're thinking, hmm, I don't think the, the baby is okay. I think there's something wrong. Yeah, I think she's almost becoming possessed by the monster in a way. And maybe that maybe that's how you become a monster. Maybe it's by reproduction. Maybe that's how the, the, they keep coming back. Because we've seen one for the Civil War. And it's like, if they date back that long, then, I mean, how do they... I don't know if I agree with that, like... No, but so where do the monsters come from, then? Oh, I don't know. I just think they've always been... Is that not people that were previously there, I'm assuming? But, well, when we see the... I mean, I, I actually think the talk between Tabith and Victor's father reveals a lot, because when Victor's father's talking to his wife, taking acid, um, which was bizarre... Well, we will get there later on, yeah, it's like. She, he was talking about the fact that you know, there's people have been chosen for like centuries for this. Well, how I mean, but then again, if he truly knew about that, then wouldn't he believe her at the beginning? Yeah, and we may as well talk about that now. Well, let's not. We'll cover it at the end. There, cover so, it at the so, end. Um, pretty much that is that. I mean, um, you had the funeral. I mean, I don't know why Ethan. You know, I mean, Victor basically told Ethan, "You're everyone's gonna die, Ethan, you dumb bastard." <laughs> Ethan cries. I I hate the actor. I I think that the Matthews kids really let this show down. I've never. I, I, Ethan didn't doesn't really. But I I always think Julie's been annoying in the no, show. No, I know, but no, I don't like. I mean, it's almost acceptable like a seven year old. But see, Julie in the first season. Oh, I'm going to go to halfway house. You look at the parents. issues. That, look at the issues that they've got. They're not. I mean, they're trapped. No, but in that, that, no, but that's where Jim's weak, right? You see, a, a fucking father. He's like, you're fucking staying in this house. 
Yeah. And if the monsters don't kill you, I will. Sort of thing. Like, <laughs> you, you lie down that level of threat. Like, do you think Boyd is going to... I mean, I know you could say, right, well, well Boyd, what like Ellis? Ellis, Ellis is a grown man. He's a grown fucking man, right? At the end of the day. And also, I think the beef between Boyd and Ellis is like, oh, he killed their mother, but who turned psycho. Wee bit more extreme than, oh, I just want to live in the hipster house. I want to rebel. Uh, yeah, so we, we have that, really. Um, Julie thanks Sarah for helping her, and Julie's beginning to wonder, is she having the same voices in her head that Sarah was? Uh, we say goodbye to Tang Chen, and then at the end of the episode, the phone goes, Jim picks it up, he wants to know who's on the other end, and apparently it's his dead son, Thomas. So that's how the episode ended, but uh, now we'll cover the... Tabitha part with Victor's father because that was probably I think that is interesting maybe the most interesting part because you've seen it for the first time yeah I almost think in a way could it be better if they like dedicate it one full episode yeah because he's like oh let's go upstairs and it cut to like Boyd like I don't know like picking through vegetables and then then it's like let's go down to the basement then it cut to Jade like fucking licking milk bottles or something you know I think maybe you could have a better structure in that sense but he does believe it at first and I said to you when we were watching it's like it's always the same old shit when it comes to supernatural stuff like they never get believed first time like why wouldn't Fictor's believed why wouldn't <laughs> believed why wouldn't believe that why wouldn't Fictor's dad be open to this idea he, he had all the stuff in the basement that pointed towards something fucking crazy yeah initially when Tabitha tells the story he calls the cops because he's he doesn't believe her he's got the gun point at her but the cops arrive and i mean at this point he has he's seen like missing articles and he he warms to the idea that tabitha might be telling the truth so he tells the cops that he made a mistake he then reveals that he bought this gun but he's never loaded it since the day that victor had went away uh then he opens up to tabitha about his his wife and then he shows her all these like pictures and drawings and all this weird shit that it looks like we've seen in the town and it try it almost like connects some pieces together. No, it does co uh, connect some pieces together. You know, to be has seen a lot of this, um, and it's what his wife drew. You know, you've got the lighthouse, you've got the diner, you've got a lot of Victor's paintings, you've got the two kids with the weird, like you know, the black dot eyes. You've got a lot of other things going on. So things are getting pieced together here. I thought of, I thought that it was uh, intriguing that Victor's father said that he went to work one day and came back and they were gone. Did they vanish in the house? Did the the mother take Victor and his sister out for a drive? We don't really. It seems to be when uh, every, you're every, Yeah, every time we've seen, as far as I'm aware, everyone getting to that village has been in a car. I mean, I think the only disappointing thing about this is, is that like there was really no mention of Tabitha saying to Victor's dad, like, "Yeah, I'm sorry to break it to you, but your wife died a long time ago, and also your daughter." I guess she doesn't want to lay it on thick for the guy, but yeah, I it was kind of like she just said Victor, and he wasn't like, "What about my wife? How has she or Grace's age?" Or, I mean, I know it's a lot to take in, but that would be questions I was asking. Yeah, it's like I was him. If if his family disappeared together, then why is he only asking about Victor? That's a little bit strange to me. That's why I originally thought that maybe he was in the town and he somehow managed to escape. Because maybe by that point he would already know that the rest of his family was dead. But he only seems to be asking about Victor. And if they all disappeared together, then like, why wouldn't he be asking about his wife and his daughter? I guess it's con like, it's definitely 100% that Victor told Tabitha that his mum and sister died, isn't it? We've seen those flashbacks. I believe so, yep. So there's not like she doesn't know and therefore she can't tell him this information. But all in all, I like this. I mean... How is Tabitha even going? How are they even going to attempt to get back into this world? I'm going See, to. See, that's the problem. The Victor's father does say that Tabitha's the chosen one, but. I mean. <laughs> I mean, he quickly goes for you're a fucking psycho to you're the chosen one. Yeah, um, he, he, he mentioned previously that his wife was. He thought that his wife was the chosen one, but she, or she was chosen to save them. But save them from what? But maybe his wife could have saved him. You know, Tabitha's been in these near-death situations in there as well. I, I don't think this chosen one's really the correct way to go. I think Tabitha's just the fortunate one that managed to get out. Yeah, I think anybody could have got out, really. Yeah, it's just like, you know, Boyd could have got out. She was just the one that was there at the, the greenhouse, or the lighthouse, so... 
I mean, I mean, as for this arc, I mean, I think this is obviously the best thing going in the show. Are we going to see these two go to the location where Tabitha, where the tree was was blocking the path? I don't know. Yeah, maybe same he, same road, same he also, route. He also mentioned that the lead investigator he told this stuff to died like 25 years ago, so there's not even a... I mean, maybe... I, I think there could have been a good dynamic where you've actually got a bit of police presence looking into this, but I do uh, like the fact it's under wraps. I mean, could the, could the police officer... I mean, the police officer died. Do we know how he died? Could he also got lost in the town? Yeah, maybe he just went missing or something. Could he still be in the town? Is there, is there any former police officers that we know of? I doubt it. You'd probably know about it. You, you would know, wouldn't you? Yeah, you don't really... But all in all, I thought this was episode... I thought this episode was much better than episode one. Um, I mean, as for the, the debt, I mean, Thomas ringing Jim, is his son... I mean, Another one of my favourite parts was when uh, Donna came down and tried to tried to lay the smackdown on Boyd, and they just told her where to fucking go. I know. What do you mean you try to save the animals? <laughs> and then Boyd just let her have it. Big rant. Fuck uh, up, Donna. I enjoyed that. So, yeah. yeah. Was, anyway. Uh, you fucking stop? Rating time. I enjoyed this episode. I thought it was better than the first one. I will give it... I'll give it a 7 out of 10. I thought it was an improvement from what we've seen in the I, premiere. I'll give it a 7 out of 10 as well, right? But let's continue down this track, right? Well, I mean, I, again, Kenny and Boyd went to the entrance of the tunnels and then that's when Boyd revealed to him, like, that's what your mother said. It's like, I would have liked them to go in. They teased us it. They didn't give us it. As for the Tabitha and Victor's father stuff, I think there's potential for that to take us back to the heyday of season one. But I also think there's the potential for them to drag it out and it just to go missing. Yeah, what I think we don't want is Tabitha and Victor's father to be discussing this come the towards the end of season three. Like, see episode three, I want them to be on the move. I want them looking for answers. They've already been to the basement. Yeah. Even if it takes giving them a full episode, I think we need to see them start moving in a direction, like you said, to get answers, to get help, or to try and get back in there to do something. I hope they don't try and, you know, drag that story arc out and then it, they don't actually do anything until, like, the last couple of episodes. Yeah. No, I mean, I mean episode four is titled There and Back Again. There, that could be reference to something that Tabitha and Victor's dad could do. Like, could she get back in and then get pushed out again? I don't know, but overall, I think season three, there's the potential there for it to be really great, but they just need to capitalise on it. And I don't think it's been confirmed for season four, and... We've seen with Lost that Lost kind of went out of control. It's from the executive producers of Lost. I think this show n needs a season four. I, I I don't think we're within eight episodes of ending it. I almost feel like it would be better if it was confirmed right now that season four was the best. And therefore they could write it. Rather than you have... You, you don't know. You've got these open-ended seasons that could end the show but might not. I think it's better when you've got right. We're going five seasons. That's when we're ending. Yeah, because if you know how, if you know how many seasons you're going, then you you can write towards that season. It's like if they don't have an an end date yet, they might just like try and drag everything out as far as they can. Whereas if you know that season four is your final season, you need to start piecing the puzzles together more quickly, rather than just you know going at a snail's pace. Yeah, I do think season two kind of lost a bit of direction. Hopefully we're getting it back in season three. I enjoyed it. Seven out of ten, guys. That's it. Let us know your thoughts down below. And I think there's, I think there's actually a few things to talk about coming out of this episode. I think they can make a few theory feeds. Whereas after the premiere, it was like it was more just to, it was. I, I for me, it was Tyra Chen dead? But yes, she is. So for me, the premiere kind of felt like an extension of season two. Yeah. Whereas this kind of did feel like we're heading in a, a new direction. So I will see what happens, guys. Anyway, that's it. We'll catch you in the next one. Until then, peace. <laughs>